Let us invite the four presidents from the association to dot the eye and make their lives alive and wake them up to bring us. Please have Carson Ho, Scarborough York Region CBA, tonight's host association, Lillian Kwok, Mr. Saga CBA, Annie Ho, Richmond Hill and Markham CBA, John Nung, Toronto CBA. Oh.
Uh, here's the MC. Ladies and gentlemen, while you're enjoying the salad and the first course, we now begin the formal part of the evening's program. And we will appreciate if you give us your attention while we introduce all our special dignitaries. The Confederation of Greater Toronto Chinese Business Association was incorporated in 1998 by the four Chinese business associations and has since been partner in many activity, fundraising effort, charity work, business venture, and play an important role in bringing together the community with our free level of governments. What a great work they do over all these years. So now, Please join us and invite the four presidents on stage to say a few words. Welcome once again, Carson Ho, President of Scarborough York Region CBA, Ms. Lillian Kwok, President of Mississauga CBA, Ms. Annie Ho, President of Richmond Hill Markham CBA, John Leung, President of Toronto CBA. Please come on stage and give us your blessings. Good evening, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Chinese New Year, Kong Ei Fa Choi. On behalf of the Confederation of Greater Toronto Chinese Business Association, we welcome you all to our 18th annual Chinese New Year Gala tonight. The Chinese New Year is the most important annual festival for the Chinese communities around the world. It is a time for family and friends to join together to share the joy that a new year brings. Each year, 
This gala gives us a wonderful opportunity to gather together in celebration of this rich cultural heritage. This year is the year of the ship. The spirit of the ship is recognized to be gentle, calm, artistic, considerate, hardworking, and persistent. In the year of ship, we wish you to be a strong-willed and energetic ship. Tonight, apart from arranging a big fest of a four-courses meal, we are much honored to have invited the Honorable Edward Fass, Minister of International Trade, to be our keynote speaker. Also, some wonderful performances have been lined up for you all. Please take this opportunity to immerse yourselves in the seasonal tradition and unique culture of Chinese. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. As we have welcoming the year of the, the ship, we are pleased to share with you some of the highlights of our achievements in 2014. In support of our business community, especially for, company, for companies they want to expand and grow themselves, we, uh, we in September last year hosted uh, a business workshop and the theme of the business workshop is called the business transformation. And we are very pleased to have invited Employment Minister Jason Kenney to be our keynote speaker. It is a very successful event. We have over 100 people attended. And very positive and encouraging feedbacks were received. So in 2015 this year, Confederation is going to host another a similar event. And in November last year, uh, four of us, uh, the presidents of the Confederation of the Toronto, of the Chinese Business Association, were invited to join our Prime Minister, Stephen ha Minister Stephen Harper, in his third official visit to China. And during this trade mission, we visited Hangzhou and Beijing. And in Beijing, Prime Minister Stephen Harper, along with all participants, witnessed the signing of the agreement more than, of more than 20 Canadian uh, organizations and Chinese organizations. Um, also, during this visit, the Chinese government announced that Canada will be the first uh, country in North America to have an official uh, renminbi hub. So apart from working with the local businesses, the CGT CBA works very diligently with other organizations as well in promoting the business between China, Hong Kong, and Canada. Also, we supported other events organized by the Hong Kong Economic Trade Office in Toronto. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, honorable guests. Throughout the year, the CGTCBA collect ideas and opinions from our members on the coming federal budget for the communication to the, mini the finance minister through local members of parliament during the budget discussion meetings. In addition, there is continuous networking among the China Trade Mission participants to promote the Canada-China business opportunities. Follow our last successful trade mission to China in 2012, we are pleased to announce that the CGTCBA will be host our next trade mission in November 2015. The primary purpose of this mission is to continue to promote the Canada-China trade. We would highly recommend you to find out more about this and join this mission as it offers great target business networking opportunities. Thank you, Annie. So in 2015, it's shaping up to be an, another very busy year for us. The Confederation will continue to strive to support our business community and to pursue 
government support to help build a serving environment and investment. This gala would not be success without the continued support of our sponsors. So we would like to take this opportunity to thank our presenting sponsor. So we would like to thank our presenting sponsor, Willow Spring Winery, our platinum sponsor, Deja Den Insurance, our air ticket sponsors, Japan Airlines, and of course, there are many, many gold and silver sponsors for their generous support. Also, we would like to thank our gala organizing committee, the volunteer, also have a great support from the media in making this gala such a success. Finally, we want to wish everyone a very enjoyable evening. May the year of the gold, ram, or ship bring you and your loved one good health, happy and prosperity. Thank you. So let's together Gong Hei Fa Chai. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to our president. We want to congratulate all of them for the great work and the great contributions they made to the community. And we wish them continued success. Tonight, we are honored to have the presence of all three levels of governments. So now we would like to introduce our dignitary to say a few words. Please join us and welcome Senator Don Miranda to the stage. Senator. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Senator Miranda. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Minister Ed Fast, great to have you here in York Region. I want to say on behalf of my colleagues in the Senate, we bring you greetings tonight and thank you for putting on such a wonderful gala. For the organizers, let's give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for this great, great event tonight. Celebrating Canadian businesses, investments here in Canada and abroad. I want to thank you for all that you do in promoting Canadian firms and all that you do to create jobs in this great country. So we thank you for that. So on behalf of my colleagues, I say congratulations, and may God continue to bless you and prosper you into this new year. Kang he fat choy. Thank you. Thank you, Senator, for your presence. Now we're delighted to welcome the Honorable Ed Fass, Minister of International Trade, to join us on stage and say a few words. Welcome, Minister. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for the very warm welcome. Wang Shan Hao, and I'm delighted to join you at this wonderful celebration. And congratulations to the Confederation of Greater Toronto Chinese Business Associations for the great job you've done in organizing this gala. And I want to offer special thanks to Lillian and Annie and Carson and John for the invitation to speak very briefly to you tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, as some of you have told me that this coming year is the year of the GOAT. Some of you have told me that this coming year is the year of the sheep. But I'm... Sorry? Goat. <laughs> Somebody just told me that was the sound of the goat. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, 
I prefer to think of this coming year as the year of the ram. Now, when you think about the ram, the ram is about stubbornness. It has those big horns. The ram is about determination. It is about boldness and courage. Ladies and gentlemen, as we think about the coming year, we realize that we live in a fragile world. The global economy is fragile. It is precarious. And yet the Canada-China economic partnership continues to thrive. And I believe the year of the ram is perfectly symbolic of what both China and Canada see for that partnership in the year ahead. We want to be determined and bold as we continue to grow our trade, as we continue to grow our investment relationship. Over the past year, unlike many other parts of the world, the Canada-China trade relationship has continued to grow. It's gone up by another $5 billion to $78 billion of bilateral trade. And we expect that to continue in this coming year. But of course, our people-to-people -people relationships are also incredibly strong. When we think of the 1.5 million Canadians of Chinese ascent who love this country here in Canada and who very much reflect upon and love their roots in China. And that is the relationship we are celebrating tonight. China and Canada as friends developing prosperity together. So as we look forward to the year of the Ram, I wish you all the very, very best. Gung Hei Fat Choi, may it be a highly successful new year of the Ram. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Minister for your kind support for being here this evening. Now, the next gentleman we're going to invite is none other than old friend of our association. Everybody knows this gentleman. This is Mr. Michael Chan. He's the cheerleader. He's the mentor of the cheerleader. None other than Honorable Michael Chan, our minister, Markham Union Mill, a Minister of Citizenship, Immigration and International Trade. Michael, please come on in and give us the word of your advice. <laughs> Michael. Thank you, thank you. Uh, talk about all along. Kid Wong really is a very long time friend. I still remember days down the Bay Street. Is it Addison uh, that uh, we kind of like partnership together, perhaps? Uh? So it uh, really goes back a number of years. Uh, 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 Minister of Affairs, Council General, Foreign Dignitaries, Presidents, Directors, Board Members, Honour Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. First and foremost, I want to, on behalf of the Premier Kathleen Min and the Government of Ontario, I want to bring you the warmest greetings. Happy Chinese New Year. I'm delighted to be with you and seeing such a large audience here tonight to celebrate the Spring Festival, a festival, in my opinion, never, never end. We live in a global village, a highly competitive world. We compete for talents, for businesses, and for jobs to strengthen our economy. Government, government can do it alone. We need partners. The private sectors, members of different industry clubs, business associations, association like the Confederation of the Greater Toronto Chinese Business Association, which year in and year out, doing a fantastic job in helping our Chinese community. I really appreciate your effort and would like to take this opportunity to thank you for your tireless work. During this never-ending Spring Festival, on this happy day, on, at this happy hour, may I wish the Chinese New Year 
year to achieve bring you health, prosperity, and happiness. Enjoy the evening. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Now the next speaker we're going to invite also need no introduction. It's the Lumanu Unu of Richmond Hill. Who's this? It's His Worship, Mayor Dave Barrow. Thank you, Dave. Let's put a big hand together for Dave. Thank you, Kit. Thank you, thank you, Kit. Nihao, nihao. Beho ma. Gong hei fat choi. It's a pleasure to, uh, to be here this evening uh, once again and celebrate uh, the new year. And uh, to Senator, members of Parliament, members of a provincial parliament, uh, elected municipal colleagues, I just want to say that together we work hard for our communities and it's great to see everyone here celebrating an important event in our community. I do want to introduce members of the Richmond Hill Council that have joined us, and they are seated in this area. Uh, Councillor Tom Munch, Councillor David West, Councillor Godwin Chan, and I believe Castro Liu is either here or on his way. He's like Frank, he just kind of arrives when it's timely, that's all. I want to thank the Confederation of Chinese Business Association for hosting this event once again. Certainly they play, they all play a key role in promoting business and trade among our nations and our municipalities and the mainstream communities that connect Canadian Chinese business community with all of us. And uh, I think this is a great day. It's a strong networking for business and culture and community. I want to wish you all health, happiness, Peace and prosperity in the year of the Ram. Gong Hei Fat Choi. Shishi, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Barrow. Thank you very much. Thank you for the support all this year. And thank you for bringing Richmond Hill to one of the best restaurants city in the world. Chinese food. Chinese food. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our next guest, has just arrived to Toronto only a few weeks ago, but he has to experience the coldest few weeks for Toronto. I think that is his power when you know his name. So let's put a hand together and welcome to Canada. We promise him that he, it, the weather will be warmer. So here's the Consul General Xi Jinping Consul General of the Consulate General of the People's Republic of China, Toronto. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Honorable Minister at Fast, Honorable Ministers, Members of Parliament, Mayors, Councillors, Ladies and Gentlemen. I'm so pleased to attend this celebration by the Confederation of the Great Greater Toronto Chinese Business Association. So I'd like to take this opportunity to wish everyone a very happy Chinese New Year.华商会举行的庆祝新年的晚会，我借此机会祝各位来宾在新的一年里身体健康，万事如意，事业兴旺。大多地区华商会一直以来为加拿大华人社区献计献策，做了大量卓有成效的工作，同时为中加两国的经济
，也促进了两国人民的相互友谊和相互了解，促进了中加关系的发展。我们大多地区华商会的大部分成员来自香港，香港是你们的故乡。虽然你们远离香远离故土，但是对香港的发展还是不会忘记的。香港一九九七年回归中国以来，彻底结束了一百五十多年的殖民统治，这是香港发展史上的里程碑。香港回归以后，香港特别政区、特别政行政区政府和立法机构由当地人组成，行政长官通过选举或协商选举产生。由中央人民政府任命，立法机关也有选举产生。中国中央政府在香港民主发展问题上的态度是一贯的，中央政府坚决按照基本法的规定，推进香港民主政治发展。主要的原则，第一是循序渐进，第二是符合香港社会的实际情况。目前，香港政府正在全力的以赴，推动香港各界理性、务实的讨论政改问题，希望能够凝聚共识，按照基本法和中国全国人大有关决定的框架，实现二零一七年行政长官的普选。五百万五百万选民有资格，一人一票。选举行政长官是香港民主发展的历史性飞跃，也是香港社会的主流意见。现在，香港政府正在积极的推进第二轮的公众咨询，相信能够成功。当前，中国的经济处于高速的发展阶段，这为加拿大提供了。难得的机遇，我希望在座的华商们抓住这个历史的机遇，进一步开拓中国市场，深挖两国合作潜力，将这种机遇的合作转化为实实在在,在的贸易机会。最后，祝大家度过一个愉快的晚上，谢谢大家。Thank you, Council General， 谢谢你今天晚晚上来的。Last but certainly not least, the late speaker really does not need introduction as well. She did a great job for her country, Hong Kong. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Director of Economic and Trade, Ms. Gloria Low. Good evening, distinguished guests, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. I have great pleasure and honor joining this wonderful celebration by the Confederation of British Toronto Chinese Business Association. The Confederation has been an important bridge connecting the Chinese business communities across the Greater Toronto area. It has worked closely with three levels of government, local bodies, and foreign governments to advance the interests of its members, and by doing so, also contributes to local business and economic growth. It has also worked beyond this country by organizing trade mission to China, covering the city of Hong Kong as well. Hong Kong has been a great friend of Canada, especially the Greater Toronto Area, where there is a strong Hong Kong community, strong community of Hong Kong descent. Our strong social ties also help us to develop strong bilateral business and trade relations. Hong Kong is now the sixth largest export market of Canada, and is among your priority markets of the Federal Global Markets Action Plan. Hong Kong is renowned as the freest economy in this whole world, the third major global financial center, and the third easiest place to do business. We have great potential to further advance our bilateral trade relation, and Hong Kong is also a great platform for venturing into Asia. 
Given all the unique advantages that we enjoy as part of China, as a special administrative region of China under the one country, two systems principles. Since 2011, we have been staging a major campaign, Think Asia, Think Hong Kong, in different cities and countries around the world for the purpose of advancing mutual benefits with our important trading partners. So far, we have covered the UK, Japan, the US, France and Italy this year. The destination of Think Asia, Think Hong Kong, will be in North America, first in Toronto, and then Chicago in the US. The event in Toronto with business symposium, business matching uh, arrangements, will be held in downtown Toronto on the 8th of June. This event will bring in town a large delegation with business leaders, a list of different professions, and also investors from mainland China and Hong Kong. This is certainly a window of opportunity for our Canadian friends to find business partners, investors, to make connections and get new insights for doing business with Asia. It will also be highly relevant and timely for your advocates of diversification for the long-term economic benefits of this country, Canada. I look forward to seeing you all at this event. Finally, I wish for the continued success of the Confederation I also give my very best wishes for the democratic development in Hong Kong, my home city, in accordance with the basic law. And I also wish you all a very happy and rewarding year of the RAM. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you, Ms. Gloria Lo, Director of the Hong Kong Economic Trade Office. It's always so enjoyable to listen to her talk about stories of Hong Kong. She's a great ambassador of the country. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you are all hungry, you are all very excited and enjoy the evening with your friends. That's why we can hear all the wonderful laughing, all that over that side. This is the better side. We're going to ask you please to give your attention for the next presenter because it really is an honor for us to have him here. So, as we just heard, the Confederation plays a key role in promoting business and trade amongst the Chinese and mainstream community. So, at this time, it is fitting and a privilege to have with us this special guest to share with us his vision and insight. So, let us invite Mr. Paul Calandra, MP Oak Ridge Markville. Markham, I just changed your reason. To come on stage, please, to formally introduce our keynote speaker. And I know you will all give your attention to this presentation. Mr. Paul Calandra, please. Thank you very much for that uh, very, very kind introduction. Uh, Ni hao, it is a pleasure to be here and welcome to the, uh, the greatest city in all of Canada, the city of Markham. I represent it, so of course it's the greatest city and of course we have uh, one of the greatest towns in all of uh, Canada, the town of Richmond Hill. So welcome here. It gives me great pleasure to be able to uh, formally introduce uh, to you uh, our keynote speaker tonight, the Honorable Ed Fast. Uh, Mr. Fass was first elected to the House of Commons in 2006 and was re-elected in both 2008 and again in 2011. He's per previously served for two terms as an Abbotsford School Trustee and for three terms as a member of Abbotsford City Council. He's a graduate of the University of British Columbia and he practiced commercial law for 24 years. Uh, Minister Fass was uh, appointed by the Prime Minister to be our Minister of International Trade on May 18. 2011 and since then of course he has been crisscrossing the globe helping to promote Canadian business and trade and open up new markets for Canada. Mr. Fast recently released Canada's first international education strategy and overseas free trade negotiations with Japan, India and the Trans-Pacific Partnership countries 
among others. And of course, as you know, we have signed a comprehensive agreement with the European Union. Prior to his appointment to cabinet, Mr. Fast chaired the Standing Committee on Justice and Human Rights uh, and was awarded the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal for service to his community and country. Minister Fast and his wife Annette have lived in Abbotsford, British Columbia for, 40, for 32 years. They have four daughters and four grandsons. So join with me in welcoming again Minister Ed Fast. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please? Well, hello again. Ni hao. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a true pleasure to be able to speak to you and share a few thoughts with you tonight on this Lunar New Year, the year of the, the Ram. I'm delighted to be joined by my parliamentary colleagues, uh, Bob Deckard, Peter Kent, Paul Calandra, um, and of course, Don Meredith. Also pleased to be here with Minister Chang, uh, His Worship, um, David Barrow, and many other political figures, business leaders in this community. Of course, the start of any new year provides all of us with an opportunity to take stock of where we have been, what we've accomplished, and what we plan to do in the coming months. And we know that the Lunar New Year is a cherished occasion for the Canadian Chinese community. It's a time to reflect on the past, recognize our good fortune, and look optimistically to the future. I've had the very good fortune of participating in many Lunar New Year events this year, and each year I am reminded of how committed Chinese Canadians are to respecting their roots and honoring their traditions, which have made them an indelible part of our Canadian cultural landscape. Our government clearly values the tremendous contributions that Canadians of Chinese descent have made and continue to make to our great country. Now the people-to-people -people ties that you continue to cultivate undergird Canada's long-term prosperity. Indeed, it is your efforts and our ongoing collaboration with our friends from China that allow all of us to look forward with great anticipation to the prosperity that this new year will deliver for all of us. And that's why I'm so pleased to be sitting right next to the Consul General, our friends from China, working together with them to build a more prosperous future for both of our countries. Now, ladies and gentlemen, John Leung asked me to talk about trade. He said, Ed, you have to talk about trade because you're the trade minister. So very quickly, I will talk a little bit about trade. I think most of you know Canada and China have a deep and long-standing trading relationship. In fact, Canada established one of its first trade offices abroad in Shanghai nearly a hundred years ago. And back then, Canada's one-person trade office focused mainly on the export of wheat and lumber from Canada, as well as the import of tea from China. Now, some of you may also recall that some 45 years ago, it was Canada that sold wheat to China when much of the rest of the world refused to do so. Now that office in Shanghai that I referred to is now one of Canada's largest consulates anywhere in the world in line with the growing volume and diversity of products traded between our two countries. Now I also note that it was 45 years ago that Canada became one of the first Western countries to establish diplomatic ties with China. And since then, Canada has joined the world in watching China's growing influence on the world stage. And we applaud, as a government, we as Canadians, we applaud the fact that China has embraced private enterprise and entrepreneurship, and its willingness to explore freer trade within and also outside of its borders. China has become a full member of the World Trade Organization and a leading voice within APEC. And when you consider China's emergence as a global economic powerhouse, it's clear that many of its economic reforms are working. So where are we today? China has now become the world's second largest economy. It is now Canada's second largest trading partner. 
And as China become, prepares to become the world's largest economy in the not too distant future, Canada will be an important partner and all of you gathered here tonight will have a role to play in that partnership. So as I mentioned earlier, after years of strong growth, our trade between China and Canada continues to grow. Last year it was $73 billion going back and forth. This year, this past year, it was $78 billion. And I would suggest to you, we haven't even scratched the full potential of that relationship. And our government is committed to building on that progress. And that's why I was so pleased when Prime Minister Stephen Harper uh, led a group of Canadian companies on a trade mission to China last November. This was the Prime Minister's third trip to China. It was my sixth trip to China. And ladies and gentlemen, some of you out there, you noted that you had joined us on that mission. And in fact, the heads of each of the four associations represented here today were on that trip with us. And I can tell you it was a highly successful trip. In less than one week in China, we witnessed the signing of contracts valued at more than $2.5 billion. And these agreements cover many sectors and are expected to result in 2,000 new Canadian jobs. So there's a good reason why we keep going back to China. Let me quote a famous story. Long ago, pointing at China on a map, Napoleon is reported to have said, there lies a sleeping giant. When she awakes, she will shake the world. End of quote. That was Napoleon referring to China. How prophetic those words have proven to be. In the last three decades, China has been witness to the greatest surge in general prosperity in the history of mankind. More than 400 million people have been lifted out of poverty, and over 100 cities now have a population of more than a million people. And as I've already mentioned, the economy, which was once completely directed by the state, to date, today has increasingly become market-oriented. And friends, many of you are here living in Canada. You've immigrated to Canada. You are Chinese Canadians. And I have often noted that what sets our Chinese Canadian immigrants apart is that they have a keen sense of entrepreneurship, something many of us Canadians have lost over the years. And we are so grateful that that sense of entrepreneurship continues to flourish in Canada um, in great tribute to the contribution that our Chinese Canadian community has made. I could go on, but the bottom line is this. China, China is truly awakened and it is set to help shape the future of the entire world. So we are working in China. We've already opened 15 different offices trade offices in China. We have over a hundred trade commissioners spread across China serving Canadian businesses who want to trade with and invest in China. And we were so pleased that the Prime Minister and President Lee were able to announce that we are now going to be setting up North America's first renminbi trading hub which will dramatically improve the competitiveness of Canadian companies as they do business with China. Canada and China now stand on the very brink of a new economic partnership. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to close by saying this. Even though we talk a lot about the Canada economic partnership with China, it is more than simply economic interests. I think we all know that it's about people-to-people -people ties that undergird this dynamic relationship we have. I want to thank all of you for the contribution you've made in building that relationship, and I look forward to joining all of you as we continue that great adventure. So let me wish all of you, on behalf of Prime Minister Stephen Harper and our whole team in Ottawa, and all Chinese Canadians, a happy, healthy, 
and prosperous year of the Ram. Ju Young Yen Xing Yi Xin Long Gong Tsuo Shun Yi. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Minister. Please just remain on stage. I think we need to brush up his Mandarin a little bit more, right? Oh, but you are right. China, the sleeping tiger giant, is away. And they're sending all their children to Toronto, Canada, right? And Vancouver, no more to Toronto. Because we got the best Chinese authentic cuisine in Toronto. So we are very privileged. It is a pleasure to have you here tonight. Thank you for your support. And now our presidents would like to just show a token of appreciation. Thank you very much for your patience. As building business is important agenda for the Confederation, we now to share, would like to share to you on our 2015 upcoming China Trade Mission. Please welcome our co-chair for this organizing committee, Winnie Fong and Ben Long to give us a speech about the uh, 2015 China Trade Mission. Vinny, Ben, let's give them a bigger round of applause, please. Welcome all here, and luckily we have the federal level trade minister here, and also we have the on provincial level trade minister here. So we all talk about trade. Remember in 2009, six years ago, it's the, on the same particular stage, we announced we have the first China trade mission in 2010. And back then, it's very really successful. And we all knew that the federal level and the provincial level, they have a big, big delegation. They are dealing with the big, big business. But don't forget, Canadian business make up of 95% are small, medium business. So each municipal party, they really would like to go to China as well. So the Confederation of Greater Toronto Chinese Business Association see this niche, see the need. So the four presidents and everybody in the association put all the effort to organize the first trade mission in 2010 with 41 delegates and four mayors. And 2012, we have 71 delegates and six mayors. So it proved its success. And then after we coming back from the trade mission, we do see a lot, a lot of feedback. We are not going there to sign just the contract. We bring in business. We bring in people to come over here. We bring
kind invitation to be here, and I certainly acknowledge all of the political guests that are here. Gloria Lowe from the Hong Kong Economic uh, Trade Development Office and all of the political representatives federally, provincially, and locally. And certainly say thank you for the kind invitation to be here to celebrate with all of you. Tonight is a great example of what Canada is all about. We have welcomed people from every corner of the world. And in Markham, we take great pride in saying that we are the most diverse city in all of Canada. And I love the fact that the business associations under the Confederation have come together tonight to celebrate a very, very important time of the year, the New Year for the Chinese community. So I welcome the members from the Mississauga Chinese Business Association, the Toronto Chinese Business Association, the Scarborough York Region Chinese Business Association, and of course, the Richmond Hill Markham Chinese Business Association. Welcome to all of you, and I want to say a special thanks to Annie Ho, who's the current president of the Richmond Hill Markham Chinese Business Association. Thank her for her incredible leadership, her board of directors, and all of the members for the great contribution they've made to Markham and Richmond Hill and truly the surrounding areas. The city of Markham has a great relationship with all of your associations, the Confederation. In 2012, we embarked on the largest business mission ever held by the city of Markham, and we worked with the Confederation to develop that business mission. It was an amazing success with a lot of contacts, over thousands of hours of meetings, government officials in, in numerous cities, businesses, uh, business deals that, that were inked while we were over there, and many, many follow-ups with delegations coming back to the greater Toronto area over the past few years. And I'm pleased to say that history is going to repeat itself again this November as the city of Markham will be leading another business delegation to China and we're working very closely with the Confederation and with the Richmond Hill Markham Chinese Business Association. This year is the year of the Ram. How many people were born in the year of the Ram? Five. Well, I want to let you know that the people born in the year of the Ram are very creative people. They're very sensitive. They work well with others. And I am hoping that all of us get inspired by those born in the year of the Ram who are creative, who reach out, who work with others so that we can create more economic prosperity in Markham and throughout the greater Toronto area. So I want to say to all of you, whatever community you are from, thank you for the contribution that you've made in making your community, your business community successful. Thank you for the way in which you've embraced not only the communities, but this great country of Canada. You have been part of our success. I know many of you came here to create a better life for yourselves, but in doing so, you've made a better Canada. And I want to thank you for all the contributions that you've made. Come here by Choi. Happy New Year, and thank you to one and all. A big round of applause.
you know what? I just want to have the first lady here, the first performer here, take away to all the all day. And then take away, the big ones are waving your hand. Thank you. The next performer, the legal performer to all day, wave the hand of that. Chung San Kho Vai Performer, Yang Thong Ho Dei, Wei Ka Hei, Nhi Wa Ni Kuo Chung Kho Chung Yi Yi Ha Nei, Thank you. Dai Se Ni Kuo Performer, Yang Hai, Thong Ho Dei, Wei Ka Wei. And then, there's the last but not least, that performer, can you wave your hand too? Oh, of course, the two young men, don't forget the two young men. I'm sorry, I don't need to break up the rhythm, but they're just incredible. Now, they're ready for the next song, of course, as we say, it's new year, and they want to wish everybody good health. So they dedicated this song to everybody. Please perform.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is girls' power. Isn't that incredible? I, I, you know what? I just want to have the first lady here, the first performer here, take a wave. Tomorrow, tomorrow day, and uh, take a wave. So you wouldn't so wave your hand. Thank you. The next performer, the eager performer, tomorrow day, wave the hand of the. And then the, the last but not least, that performer, can you wave your hand too? Oh, of course, and the two young men, don't forget the two young men. I'm sorry, I don't mean to break up the rhythm, but they're just incredible. Now, they're ready for the next song. Of course, as we say, it's New Year, and they want to wish everybody good health. So they dedicate this song to everybody. Please perform. tradition and culture. I wish our children at home can be that disciplined. Okay. I think they are ready for their third and last song. And again, it's dedicated to everyone wishing you good fortune. Thank you. 